Hey guys, it's Andy here, and it's been 12 hours since I revived these two cells. Uh, currently, they're running this system at 1.67 volts and uh, 1.4 milliamps, which is uh, kind of interesting because if you look at the brightness, it just depends on how you look at it, it's, it's pretty bright, like... These are at about maybe 50% brightness, so before they were at about 60 to 70% brightness. But uh, even with that, it's still doing very well. If I just throw a bit more water in there, it'll kick up the amperage a lot more. The interesting thing about crystal cells is the magnesium is the fuel source. The magnesium gets eaten away at um, a lot faster than we'd like to right now. So, that's why I've got this, um, where are you? This little guy right here. So I'm going to put him together tonight. I've, uh, oxidized him with, uh, what was it, baking soda and just air. You can see the white oxidization is from the air and the little black, if you can see it, is from the, uh, baking soda. So I'm going to see uh, what my current output with that is and also um, what the corrosion is after one week. This here is a 20 millimeter brass shell. Brass is 70% uh, copper, 30% zinc. What's interesting about that is uh, if you have a boat, you most likely have a zinc uh, cathodic plate, which basically prevents corrosion and rust of the frame of your boat and magnesium can be used as well. Now we're using magnesium in the same concept where we're uh, corroding the magnesium to allow electron flow which makes our cell. When I built this guy he's about uh, almost an inch high, a one inch diameter using this three quarter inch diameter magnesium core. I was getting 230 milliamps as soon as I built him which is very interesting. Um, that kind of output, it, it has to do something with the 30% uh, zinc content of this brass. I'm, I'm sure of it because, I mean, uh, Laser Sabers built similar ones. And maybe it's just because it's John's crystal composition. I'm not sure, but this, the fact that this is brass may have a large part to do with that. So once I uh, do my corrosion testing of this oxidized magne magnesium core then I'm gonna put this guy together but I don't want to waste materials uh, to be honest I'm trying to be a little bit more uh, conservative with what I've got and the best way to do that is to just go a little bit slower and just see where things go but I just wanted to mainly talk about the idea of a crystal cell and what exactly is going on as far as I'm concerned. Because I've watched a lot of videos on it and very few people talk about the uh, the relationship between um, magnesium and uh, cathodic materials and their uses currently in the real world. I mean, uh, you'll never get around this corrosion, but... I believe I can slow it down a great deal using oxidization. So, if we can do that, I mean, I don't need 230 milliamp output, but I would like uh, over 150. That would be ideal. It's nice being able to see that I can power this many LEDs using just these two tiny button cells that I built. It uh, It really... It really shows validity in this, in the future. I mean, we have a long ways to go with crystal cells, but, I mean, uh, this this is progress right here. And uh, I know John is working on a way to uh, be able to flush the system and renew the magnesium. And it's interesting, his idea, with uh, just a liquid instead of a uh, solid. I mean, that's the only way you can easily flush the system because uh, the crystals, they uh, compress and they expand outward. So um, you would never be able to replace the magnesium without destroying the entire cell and rebuilding it like I've been doing. Because uh, 
this this guy here, like I said, he's recycled. I mean, think I've built like five cells using this copper. So it's just something to note. This kind of technology I can see in alarm clocks, radios, uh, maybe cell phones, because cell phones are always on and crystal cells are always on. Uh, Xbox controllers, PlayStation controllers, uh, stuff that you use a lot and um, you would already be replacing batteries constantly. Whereas uh, this would be a um, renewable, non-environmentally hazardous uh, material. Like there's no sulfuric acids, there's no strange chemicals in it. You don't have to worry about throwing this in the landfill because it's all chlorides, magnesium, and copper. It's It doesn't worry about overheating or catching fire or blowing up and no worry about uh you know killing the drinking water or whatever not <laughs> which is a lot to say about uh Duracell and Energizer I mean I think that brass is going to replace copper because uh I received uh very good results from it this little guy this small putting out 230 milliamps is very surprising um so, it'd be nice to see if someone else can replicate that. But for right now, I'm focusing on the oxidization, uh, seeing if I can fix that problem before I uh, destroy an entire, you know, entire uh, magnesium core, because that's, that's a lot of material to just uh, eat away at. So, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more, and have a good day.